Well, hello, thank you for joining me today again on the Church History Trail. You can see a board there saying Northern Whig House, and that used to be a newspaper building, but it was also the home of Samuel Nielsen, the United Irish Man. And some of the Monaghan militia met there and drank there, and four of their members were actually executed at Blurish Moor on the 16th of May, 1797, for being members of the United Irish Men. But I want to uh, talk to you today about the Musket Minister, and that was the Reverend Sinclair Kilburn and he was born in Dublin in 1754 and in 1780 he was appointed minister in the third Presbyterian church here in Rosemary Street in Belfast. He was assistant to the Reverend William Lord, and then when Lord retired he succeeded him. So he gained a reputation as an enthusiastic and able clergyman as well as an impressive preacher and two of his most famous uh, congregates were Brother and sister Henry Joy and Mary Ann McCracken, who were very much involved in the United Irish Movement. And that they actually lived in this building here, to the left. And so this is a wine cellar entry. It houses the oldest tavern in Belfast, White's Tavern, in 1630. Now it's said that Sinclair often led services and preached dressed in his full volunteer uniform, which he was a member of, with his musket leaning up against the pulpit. And although the Reverend Sinclair Kilburn was a regular contributor to the Northern Whig, which was indeed a publication of the United Irishmen, he was not a member of the society. Also, unlike many of the radical Presbyterians of his day, Sinclair was an old light theologian rather than a new light theologian. So, for example, in 1792, he uh, wrote the divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, asserted and proved. So he believed in the deity of Christ, that Christ is God. And you can see his church there. Now, at the same time, he supported the twin causes of political reform and Catholic emancipation. And Kilburn's growing notoriety, of course, brought him to the attention of the authorities. And in 1793, a party of soldiers went on the rampage and actually attacked his house. So that plaque there is for the Freemasons. This is a, free, a, a Masonic building now, but it was also Sinclair's church. And there's a plaque here. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's very hard to see. But uh, it's got Henry Joy McCracken's bust on it and says 1798. It says radical Belfast Presbyterian Henry Joy McCracken was hanged at Corn Market for leading the United Irish men at the Battle of Andrum, 7th of June, 1798, faithful to the last. And faithful to the last there was because he was offered a, a pardon, but he refused it if he would inform. And uh, he sent word to Thomas Russell, another United Irish man, that he was faithful um, to the last. In other words, he hadn't um, informed. So that's the building there where Henry Joy and his sister, Mary Ann McCracken, lived. Now, the Reverend Kilburn was arrested in April uh, 1797. He was charged with high treason and he was taken to Kilmainham uh, Jail down in Dublin and he was imprisoned. Now, the Reverend Kilburn's loyal parishioner sent a petition with 162 signatures to the Earl of Camden asking for his release, but of course that was ignored. Um, harsh treatment and poor conditions in the jail severely compromised Kilburn's uh, health. And by the time he was released in June 1798, he had lost the use of both of his legs. And he returned to the congregation and ministered the best that he could. Um, he, he accompanied both James Dickey and Henry Joy McCracken to the scaffold at their executions. This is actually the abolitionist, Frederick Douglass. Now, in October 1799, the reformer, the, sorry, the Reverend Sinclair, Kilburn was asked to resign due to ill health, so he tendered his resignation in 1800, and the congregation then presented him with a, a, a commemorative plate, and uh, he died on the 31st of March 1802, and is buried in the Presbyterian Cemetery at Castle Ray. So thanks for watching, and God bless.